So this is a discussion of repeatability uh, for the data analysis controlled assessment. So repeatability is how close together repeated values in your experiment are. So if the repeats are close together, then we say the measurement has a high repeatability. Uh, so the repeatability can change throughout an experiment because it, it's different for each of the um, values of the independent variable. So if we look at this table, for example, of um, uh, results for dropping a ball bearing from different heights and timing the amount of time it takes to hit a surface, then if we look at this set of data for 150 centimetres drop height, then we have 0 0.55, 0 0.57, 0 0.55. Um, they are very closely grouped, so we'd say that those are repeatable. There's only a, a difference of 0 0.02 across the entire set of repeats. Um, on the opposite side of that, if we look at the um, the data above it for the 100 centimetre drop height, we've got 0 0.41, 0 0.44, 0 0.49, so 0 0.08, four times um, the spread of results there as, as in the bottom one. So we'd say that the 100 centimetre drop height readings show lower repeatability as they are less closely grouped. Um, so it's difficult to sort of judge repeatability in isolation. It's a lot easier to comment on changes in repeatability during the experiment. Um, one other way to do it, which is very useful, is to and, and you should do this, is to look at the <clears throat> range bars in your graph when you plot the data. So here's that same data plotted um, on a graph with range bars. Okay. Obviously, in your real experiment, you'll have more than four different values of the independent variable. You should have six, really. Um, but just for the sake of example, we've only got four here. So you can clearly see that that um, highly repeatable set, right, where the repeats are very close together, produces, as you would expect, a very small range bar. Okay. So you don't necessarily need to look at the table. You can comment on repeatability by looking at the size of your range bars if they are plotted correctly. And similarly, the measurement with a fairly low repeatability has a much larger range bar. So it's difficult to sort of judge what constitutes a large range bar and a small range bar, but um, you can kind of see by looking at the, at the graph if the range bars are uh, a similar sort of size compared to the size of the graph as, as the 100 centimetre um, value here, then that's probably quite a large range bar. And if they're... Um, the same sort of size as the 150 centimeter value, then they're very small range bar and you'd say high repeatability. So you need to be able to make a comment about this um, to get the highest marks uh, in one of the strands in your data analysis. So just have a, a pause the video and, and comment on the repeatability of this data. So you have the table and the graph to comment on. You might also want to think about what might have caused the low repeatability of the um, of the 30 second charging time here. So this is our experiment that we've used before as an example of uh, the charging of a um, electric car and the distance it can travel. Okay, so pause the video and we'll go through uh, an example of an answer in a second. Okay, so what could you have written? Well, it's good to comment on the general repeatability of the whole experiment. So if you can see there are three points here out of the four. Um, which show quite a high repeatability because the range bars are small. So when you make the comment, you need to link the high repeatability to the small size of the range bars. You must make that link. okay? And then highlight the one that's different. The 30-second charging time data shows quite low repeatability due to the... Um, the you could say that there are outliers in, the, in this data set, the 2.69 and 3.45, you could say are both outliers. I mean, it's difficult to, to make that judgment for two out of the three readings. But clearly something different has happened for that 30-second data set when you compare it with the 10, 20, and 40. Uh, and usually when you have low repeatability, it's because you haven't properly controlled all the variables you should have controlled. So something's changed. So in this case, it could have been, you know, um, the brightness of the lamp, the charging lamp, the distance away that you were holding the car from the charging lamp. Okay? Um, so the good conclusions to your experiment will have this kind of information in it. So that's what repeatability is. Make sure you talk about it and make sure you link repeatability to size of the range bars on your graph. Okay, so this video is for talking about uh, accuracy in the context of uh, the data analysis control assessment task. So what is accuracy? Well, it's how close a measurement is to the true value. Uh, the trouble is that we, we never really know exactly what the true value of a, of a measurement should be. 
So one way to look at it is if you look at the graph of the points that you've plotted, uh, do the points lie near the line or curve of best fit? And if that's the case, it suggests that the results are accurate because we can see a nice trend. So on the left-hand side here, we've got uh, the plotted points and the red range bars, okay, and uh, a line of best fit. And the line of best fit can easily go through all of the range bars. So it's a curve of best fit, doesn't matter if it's a straight line or a curve. One smooth curve goes through all the range bars and near the points. So we say that, um, that those results are probably quite accurate. And if we look at the graph on the right, we see a similar sort of trend, but uh, this time the line of best fit, the curve of best fit, it's not possible to have a nice smooth curve that goes through all of the range bars. You can see it misses the second range bar and the third one and the fifth one just about sort of skims the bottom of it. So we generally tend to say that those results are less accurate or inaccurate as a smooth curve cannot be made to pass through all the range bars. We could do it but we'd have to have the curve wiggle up and down uh, and that wouldn't therefore count as a smooth curve. Okay, so um, time for you to decide whether or not you're happy with this. Uh, pause the video, look at these four graphs below, and see whether you think the points that are plotted represent accurate or, or inaccurate results, and more importantly, can you explain why? And we'll go through the answers in a sec. Okay, so let's have a look at these then. Well, graph number one, uh, I won't say is accurate, because if you look, you can put a nice straight line of best fit through... Uh, very close to the points through the range bars so we all the points lie close to the line of best fit so it's accurate number two well it's a curve this time but still it's one smooth curve goes through all the range bars and fairly close to the points so again we'd say accurate for number three well it's a downward sloping line and and if you if you play around with it you, you can kind of mess the line about and get through some of the range bars but you can't really get through all of them uh, with a straight line or with a curve, okay, because the points are either side of the line and not close enough that you could do that. And we're, we're completely missing the range bar for the third point here and just missing the one for the fifth point as well. So we'd say that those results are probably inaccurate. And the number four, yes, it's an unusual trend, certainly, um, to be to go up and then down again, but um, it is still a smooth curve. We can put through those points, okay. So you would still say that those are accurate, even though the trend is slightly unusual. So hopefully that's helped you uh, with accuracy. Do watch the other videos uh, to make sure you're happy with the other terms that you need to use for your data analysis. Okay, so this is discussion of outliers in the context of the data analysis control assessment task. Well, first of all, what's an outlier? Well, it's a result which doesn't agree with the other results in a data set, so in a set of repeats. And if you're looking at a graph, then what that would look like is that one end of the range bar will be a very long way from the line or curve of best fit. Okay, some important points to note. Uh, it has the word outlier has to refer to a single repeat measurement. It can never refer to an average value. So an average value can't be an outlier. It's the individual repeats that you've done that count as outliers. Um, you shouldn't get rid of them without a reason. Okay, you shouldn't just throw outliers away because you don't like the look of them. If you do discard one, you have to have a very good reason for doing it. Okay, and ideally, any result which is an outlier, if you think it is then you should repeat it again uh, to get a new value. That way you at least have some justification for discarding it, but you should also try and come up with a reason why it went wrong in the first place. And please don't feel like you have to identify some outliers. If you've done your experiment very well, it's entirely possible you won't have any, and all you need to do then is to justify your decision that there aren't any outliers. Okay, so you don't have to go looking for them. It's not essential to have them as long as you point out that you don't have any and how you know that you don't have any. So, uh, let's have a look at some examples then. So this is a table of um, some repeat readings for a very simple experiment where you drop a ball bearing from different heights and use a timer to time how long it takes to hit the ground. So, dropped it from 50 centimetres and these are three repeats. 0 0.32 seconds, 0 0.35 seconds and 0 0.29 seconds. So the question is, well, where are the, is there an outlier in this data set and if so, where it is and what might be the cause? Uh, and if you have a look around, I mean, the first, the 50, 100, and 150 height drops, the results seem reasonably consistent, okay? Some people would be tempted to say that this uh, third one for the 50 centimetres, the 0.29, is an outlier, and we'll come back to that in a second. I don't agree with that at all. Um, the obvious one is the first result for the 200 centimetre um, reading, okay? There it is. And obviously, if you have an outlier and you include it in your average, then, then it affects the average, 
So what we should really be doing in that case is to think about, well, why might that outlier have happened? And secondly, um, what should we do about it? Well, why might it have happened? Well, it's unlikely you've dropped it from a significantly different height than the 200. It would be kind of difficult to do that. Um, it, so it may be that, the, that in writing the results down, this has gone wrong. If you look, that, that it could be that those two figures have been transposed. So rather than writing down 0 0.63, they've accidentally written down 0 0.36. That's one possible explanation. It's hard to imagine it going completely wrong in any other way. I mean, I suppose uh, an error when starting and stopping the timer could also have done that. Um, but we don't know because we haven't done the experiment. When you're doing your experiment, it's important that you think about what the outliers might be as you're doing it. Okay? Did if, if you get something that looks like an outlier, was there something that didn't quite go right in that part of the experiment? And if there was, you must admit it. Don't try and hide it. You must admit it and do something about it. So what we should do here is redo the result. And if you redid the result, you might get something like 0.60 which has changed on the table now, and of course that's affected the average, because we've now got the average of these three things. Okay, So you must make sure that you um, redo the results if you think you've got an outlier, and write down a reason why you think it was there in the first place. Um, be really careful. There's sort of psychological effects that can come into play when you're trying to identify outliers, and here's an example. So three repeats again, 0 0.98, 1.01, 1.09. It doesn't matter what the measurements are, we're just interested in the numbers for the moment. So if there's an outlier, which one is it? Um, and again, a lot of people will say 0.98. There's a big psychological impact of not having that one at the front. That one looks like it doesn't fit. But what we care about for identifying outliers is not that, but just how close together the results are. And one way to deal with this is to plot them on a number line so you can see a bit more clearly how far apart they are. And when you do that, it's clear that even though the, this first result, the 0.98, does starts with a zero, and so psychologically you think, oh, that's very different, it's actually the 1.09 that's much further away. Okay, now some of you may have thought that was obvious, that's fine, um, but it's a very common mistake that people tend to identify outliers just based on this sort of psychological impact. So if you're not sure, plot them on the number line. And the question is, well, is the 1.09 an outlier? Is it far enough away? It's very difficult to judge that. Um, you've got to make a judgment call. One thing you can do if you're doing sort of a standard set of three repeats is to say, well, that's how far apart 0 0.98 and 1.01 are, the two that are close together. Is the third repeat more than twice as far away as that? And if it is, you could probably say it's an outlier. I mean, in this case, it's probably difficult, actually. I mean, what you, what you could also do is to take some more repeats and see if, if you just get a spread that's quite large. Okay, So there are various alternative approaches, and, and part of doing a good job on the data analysis task is to be adaptive right, and change what you do. If you're not sure whether that's an outlier, you could take an extra repeat, take a fourth repeat and see. Okay, and, and write down that that's why you've done that, to help you see whether that's an outlier or not. If your fourth repeat comes in at 0.99, then you've got some more evidence that the, the 1.09 is an outlier. If your fourth repeat comes in at 1.05, then probably the 1.09 isn't an outlier, and it's just that your results aren't very repeatable. Okay, So, you know, there's no hard and fast rule about outliers. Whenever you identify one, you've got to justify why you think it's an outlier and why what you think went wrong. Okay, that's really important. And redo it. So, uh, pause the video, then have a look at this table, see if you can work out uh, where you think the outliers might be in this data set, and what you would do um, with the outlying result when you, when you found one. Okay, so pause it, and we'll go through in a second. Okay, so... Um, Deliberately in here, I've stuck a kind of a couple of um, things to try and trick you. If any of you went for those two, well, that's the psychological effect we were just talking about here. This 2.99, it's pretty close to these other two. It's just over the sort of three uh, meter boundary here, um, but it's not really far enough away to call it an outlier. And similarly, the 4.02 has just gone up from the 3.9s into the fours, and psychologically, that's a big thing. But actually, in terms of the spread of the repeats, it's not massive. The most kind of obvious one um, that is correct is the 1.67. I think that's probably the, the obvious outlier there. And there are several reasons you could suggest. Again, you haven't done the experiment, so you don't know. But it's very similar to the 10-second charging time. Is it possible they've accidentally done it for 10 seconds for that one? Um, did the bulb get dimmer for some reason? Was the solar cell kept further away from the lamp? Both of those last two things you know, are a failure to properly control things in your experiment, properly control other variables. We'll talk about this in the other videos, but remember you're trying to assess the effect of your changing your independent variable, which in this case is charging time, 
on your dependent variable, which in this case is the distance that the little electric car was able to travel. And if you change other things, like the distance to the solar cell from the lamp and the brightness of the lamp, that will affect your results. So outliers can come from a failure of control. And if we have that outlying result, well, again, we would note in your table what we've done. We will think about the reason why. Uh, just note down next to your table and, um, you know, obtain another result. So you have to do this during your experiment if it's going to be as effective as it possibly can be. Okay, that's it for outliers then.